Hi everyone, this is a follow-up video for a video I posted a few days ago on how you can maximize your ability to earn the uh, comp governance token. So just as a recap before I talk more about the risk, because I, I really want to outline again, where is that risk and how can I prevent myself from being liquidated and just because liquidation means I lose whatever funds I originally deposited into that position. Uh, so uh, the way that I started this out was I went to instadap, dsa.instadap.io. I went to the compound uh, dashboard and then I deposited a hundred die. So that is the maximum amount that I can lose. Now I deposited a hundred die. There are people that have deposited tens of thousands of dollars. And, and granted, if you're in that position, and I, I guess if someone has the ability to risk that capital, you know, that's up to them. But I, I'm just thinking about anyone who has uh, less experience with leverage and uh, is potentially taking more risk following how to use this maximize comp mining feature. So again, if we start with 100 die, I go here, I click on this, I'm uh, using that collateral. So again, imagine I started with 100 die, but I'm gonna switch it, um, I'm gonna borrow debt in Tether. Now the reason that I had done that originally was that when we go to uh, compound.finance slash governance slash comp, this shows me the interest being paid per day across the different, the nine different markets on compound. The more interest being paid per day, at this point in time, that is what decides the amount of comp token that's being distributed to lenders and to borrowers. And it's 50-50. So it doesn't matter like, uh, it doesn't matter that there's maybe uh, more money being lent and less money being borrowed. It's just being split 50-50 across uh, suppliers and borrowers. A few days ago, Tether was, uh, the Tether market was accruing almost 2,800 comp tokens. So it was very, very lopsided because the Tether market was earning all of the interest um, and it was a disproportionate amount of interest compared to all these other markets. So like, for example, DAI is only earning $765 uh, dollars of interest per day right now versus Tether is earning 26,000. However, someone went in and uh, uh, lent and borrowed a lot of the BAT token, the basic attention token. So this is incredibly lopsided just from yesterday. I mean, a few days ago, uh, the BAT token market was earning, I think maybe like five comp for the day. It was very, very small. So it's not a problem, but I'm just noting the fact that like this system is very new, it's very imperfect and some of these incentives, you know, allow someone with a lot of money to, you know, basically game the market here and be able to earn more tokens. Um, now, I think over time, some of that should, uh, uh, should resolve itself just because when someone does that, I mean, uh, unless they can keep up with the borrowing rate, the, there is no interest on this side and hence there is less interest than being paid per day. So this number drops and then that means that there are less comp tokens being distributed. And, you know, in other words, like it's, it's a short term way for someone to earn a bunch of comp token. Okay. Experiment. So I posted this just in the last day and I was mentioning some of the risks to farming or mining for the comp token. And some of them are really obvious. Uh, you know, there's a smart contract bug that's always top of mind for me, you know, so that's something that if there was a smart contract bug that allowed someone to drain money, let's say out of compound, that would be really alarming. Uh, there is a way for me to mitigate that risk. If I am lending money to uh, compound, or if I have, uh, I guess I wouldn't think of it as the borrowing position. Let's just focus on if I'm lending uh, USDC or DAI or Tether, I can go to nexusmutual.io and I can take out smart contract cover. It's, it's a way to say, I want protection for the next, let's say 90 days. Uh, 
for lending XYZ assets. So, so that's one way I could do it. Another thing is I could protect my DAI or my USDC lent through uh, open. So open offers, uh, it, it is a put option on the assets that you are lending to compound, but it, it essentially acts like an insurance. So if we look here, here we go. So it, it's protection for the next seven months and 19 days. And, and again, like this would be something that I might consider if I was worried about smart contract bugs and wanting to ensure that there's no possible way that a smart contract bug could lead to me losing my funds. A liquidity crunch, uh, what I'm referring to there is when you lend assets to Compound, uh, if, if let's pretend there's 100 million lent on a market. Now, the ability to pull my money back out of that means that it can't be 100% utilized. So if 100 million is, is lent and then 100 million is borrowed, I don't have the ability to pull that back out because it's still borrowed and, and I'm going to have to wait. And, and again, like if that's a concern for you, uh, I, I haven't seen that on a compound market yet. But if that was a concern, that, that's a good example of like not being able to pull your money when you want it, which is, you know, kind of part of like the magic of, of these um, trustless decentralized finance applications is, you know, you're always in control of your assets. And for the applications where you deposit them and you're lending them, it's ideal that you're able to pull them out whenever you want. The next one here is admin key or governance compromise. Uh, two examples here would be governance compromise would be that someone buys an inordinate amount of uh, comp tokens and then they end up voting for some proposal that I guess hurts, hurts you, hurts the community overall. Like, it would be voting on a proposal that is, is not good for the compound protocol, the compound community. Uh, then there's the admin key uh, to be concerned about. The admin key in compound, as far as I know, there, there is like a delay in terms of that access to the admin key. So in other words, like whoever has access to an admin key on any DeFi application, I mean, technically if someone held that person hostage, I mean, they could, you know, use that key to do things that are potentially harmful, you know, to, to suddenly manipulate funds that are in the application or in the smart contracts of a DeFi app. Uh, these are two that I'm not really concerned with Compound personally for what money I've lent. Um, again, they've done a lot to abstract away the risk of an admin key. And then uh, the, the governance compromise, again, I, I think it would be very difficult to do, do this considering the, some of the bigger players that are equity shareholders in Compound. When, when I'm holding a position like this, so you notice, again, I, I've got technically 300 die that's been supplied and I've got 200 tether that's been uh, borrowed. I really started out here with just 100 die. So that 100 die, because of the ability to use this tool, I'm able to use flash loans and in one, uh, and in one um, transaction, I'm able to borrow 200 tether, swap it to die, and then add it to this position. And so I end up with a, a leverage position. Uh, that's cool, but all of this hinges on the fact that these are stable coins and they maintain their dollar peg. And I mean, I guess there's two things I can think of that would, uh, you know, cause me to, you know, have this position get liquidated. Uh, one is an Oracle failing. So an Oracle is, is think of it as like a price feed. And so whatever, whatever Oracle we're dependent on, 
if someone is able to attack that oracle or to manipulate it and say that suddenly tether is worth uh, 90 cents on a dollar or you know uh, 75 cents on a dollar well suddenly actually let's think of it uh, over here uh, in terms of my my die my collateral if someone's able to do that with die and make die look like it's less valuable well suddenly my collateral is worth less and my liquidation uh, risk is is now higher so in other words like I'm trying to maintain that I've got more I've got enough collateral to cover myself uh, and pay back this debt here and so that that's that's very risky if suddenly this die is made to look like it's worth a lot less. So that, that's an Oracle attack that I would be concerned about. Another thing could be, I, I don't know how much money it would take in this market, but I guess if someone went in and was able to short enough die to the point that the price uh, in whatever Oracle I'm using reflected that die was actually you know, uh, was worth less than that dollar peg, you know, significantly. Let's, let's pretend someone shorts it somehow down to like 85 cents on the dollar. Again, I end up with collateral now that is worth less. And so this puts me at risk of being liquidated. When I open this position, this is, again, this is based off of me borrowing 200 Tether, swapping it to die, and then adding it to my die position. <clears throat> but it costs money for me to borrow that Tether. And at this point, I think today the, the rate on Tether borrowing annualized is about 11%. So if I were to borrow 100 Tether, and let's just pretend for the sake of simplicity that the borrowing rate remained the same for an entire year, I would owe 11, you know, tether at the end of the year. So one of my concerns for folks that are trying this, if, if you're less experienced with trading and like how leverage works, is that this uh, status up here, which is showing that I have essentially borrowed 67% when I can borrow up to 75% of the value of my collateral. Uh, which is where I would get liquidated. So I, I don't want to cross the 75% mark. Uh, every day that I hold this position, I have a tether debt that is accruing interest because I'm, I'm borrowing it. So it's, you know, it's a loan. Over here, I, I'm a, a lender and I've, I've got a, you know, a certain amount of collateral that allows me just to borrow this. But on, on this side of the equation, that debt that I've, I've borrowed is costing me, you know, that that's, that's how compound works. Borrowers pay interest and lenders earn that interest. And that's why it's a, it's a really awesome application that people like to use because you can earn, you can earn interest that traditionally gets paid away to a lot of middlemen in uh, legacy banking. So if you're not paying attention to the interest that is being accrued as a borrower over here, that interest is essentially uh, making this, this status that you're seeing, it's rising. So if I'm not paying close attention to this, if I, like this is not a position that I open up and I leave and I don't come back for six months because this is such a, a small difference between, you know, 67% and 75% that, I mean, over time, I would be concerned that my interest, let's, let's pretend that the tether borrowing interest shoots up to 50 or like 60%. Well, now I'm accruing interest even faster. And so every day that this ratio here is, is rising. And, and so that puts me at risk of, of being liquidated. So you have to be conscious that if you're going to hold a position like this, you know, again, I'm, I'm holding what I think is small for my portfolio, and it's, it's really more of an experiment. Um, you know, so far, I've, o I've only earned 0.01 comp, which is about five, it's about $5 based on the price of comp being uh, around $350. I guess the, the key takeaway here is 
even if you open up a position like I have, I need to be aware of whatever interest I am accruing here so that I can come back to this um, and babysit it and make sure that I don't get liquidated because of the accrued interest destroying my, my ratio that's under 75%. The, the last risk we've, we've basically covered already, but um, just reiterating that when you use leverage, the only reason that I am allowed to borrow here and deposit back here is because of the fact that there is enough room here for them to still liquidate me <clears throat> and to be able to pay back this debt. So being liquidated on this position could mean that I walk away with nothing. You know, that I started with 100 DAI, and even though I've created a position now where I have 300 DAI and I've borrowed 200 Tether, I could actually uh, walk away from this with zero DAI, but it gets liquidated by the smart contracts so that this debt gets paid back to other borrowers. This whole experiment that, I, that I've been doing using Instadap with maximizing comp mining this is based off of me using stable coins. So these are assets that have a stable price. You know, they hang around $1 and they don't fluctuate a whole lot. Like, you know, I mean, one, a 1% 1 swing is, is a lot. When you bring into the equation something like Ether or let's say the BAT token, these are more volatile assets. And so if I were to collateralize Ether, which is essentially what people have always done with MakerDAO. That's why that's MakerDAO allows you to collateralize Ether uh, or wrapped Bitcoin now or the BAT token. And then you can take a loan and die. Y you have to, when I've done this, I've had to use a much smaller ratio here. The ratio has normally been, the, the way that I'm looking at it is if I have a, if my collateral has a 0.75 uh, it's a collateralization factor. That is, that is like me borrowing again, 75 cents on every dollar that I've collateralized. When I do this in Maker, I mean, I'm, I'm only borrowing at most, uh, I can borrow around 66 cents on every dollar. So it's less. 66 cents versus 75 cents on every dollar. And, and that's where that ratio, if you take one divided by 0.66, uh, you'll get around 150%, which is how most of us talk about taking out a loan in Maker. Uh, so, so these are all things that I need to be you know, mindful of. Uh, you know, I've been focused on stable coins, but I've heard people referring to Ether, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just you need to realize that the experiment that I am running here is uh, not subject to the sort of volatility that can happen here with Ether. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do to consider uh, lowering the risk of my position uh, while I am you know, mining for comp, I could go in and I could just add more collateral. It's really simple. You know, if I go in here and I click deposit, if I go in and I add 100 die, you can see that my, my, my status or my, my uh, uh, ability to, to borrow uh, drops from 67% to 50%. And, and then you can see in, in Instadap, I'm not sure where the numbers change over, but it goes from what's labeled as risky to safe. You know, if I were to go down by just 10, I'm only dropping from 67% to almost 65%. So that's, that's one way I could do this. Uh, again, I'm borrowing stable coins against stable coins. I've got a very small amount of, of you know, exposure here for my portfolio. So at, at just $100, 100 die being risked at most, I'm okay for this to remain at 67%. Another way though, for me to uh, reduce my risk and create a quote unquote safer position is I could just pay back some of the tether. 
So there's two ways for me to do this. I can go here, clicking the payback button, and I can, I can, you know, take Tether that is in my Insta in my InstaDap DeFi Smart account, and I can pay it back directly. So in this case, if I were to pay back 50 Tether of the 201 Tether that I've borrowed, I currently in my my DeFi smart account, which is uh, essentially, it's a wallet linked to my, my MetaMask wallet. Um, it's money that I deposited into Instadap. I, I can go ahead and pay that back here and that'll reduce from, that'll reduce my, my quote unquote status from 67% to 50.36%. Okay, so there's one last way for me to, to uh, uh, improve my status or, or to make it again, less risky. I can go to the save and unwind option. So remember, I, I used maximize comp mining to get into this thing in the first place, to borrow that tether, swap it to die, and then add to my die position. I can unwind that. I can do the, the, the reverse. So I've got, currently I've got die as my collateral. I have tether as my debt. And I can choose to say, let's withdraw 100 of my die position. I'm going to swap that die to tether, and then I'm going to pay back that debt. And again, if you remember a moment ago, I was showing that if I just pay back tether, it reduces it down to this 50.32%. But you don't have to add more tether to the system, you know, because like if, let's go back here just to clarify. If I just pay back Tether directly here, if I were to pay back uh, the maximum amount here, if I pay back all that Tether, I can walk away with 300 die. You know, now I've got, I've got 300 die, but that's because I added $200 uh, dollars more to the system. So I started out with 100 die, I opened up this you know, this crazy leveraged position with all the magic of, of flash loans. But if I add another 200, if I pay back 200 tether, well, fine, I, I can walk away with the 300. Uh, and it, that's not, I haven't earned anything. You know, it's just that I, it's, I went from 100 to $300 um, in the system. And so I have the right now to withdraw my, my $300. So I haven't, I haven't accomplished anything by doing that. Now, if we go back to that option here, this is really powerful because it doesn't require me to have more money, to put more money into the system, to withdraw money that I didn't even have before this whole experiment started. So if I go to die as my collateral, I go to um, tether as my debt. Let's say that I'm gonna pay back uh, all 200.31 of my tether. Cool. I'm gonna withdraw, I'm gonna take all of that die, uh, and so in this case it's 200.31 or whatever these uh, is the equivalent of die. I'm gonna take that out as die, I'm gonna swap it to tether, and then it's gonna pay it back here. And that's it, now I've paid back my debt, I walk away with 97.22 die. Uh, so this is, this is what someone, you know, is going to do once they're, they're done with mining comp or they want to walk away from the experiment. And, and so I don't have to close it all at once though. I can just say, actually, let's uh, deleverage. Let's take 50 die from this deposit. Let's swap it to the tether. Let's pay back that tether debt. And I'll end up with what, 150 tether and I'll have 247 uh, die in my collateral position still. And my status had dropped from like 67% to 60.42. If I go back and I do 100 die, it drops to 50. If I go to 150, it drops to 33%. So like, anyways, you, you get the idea. Okay, so that's all I've got for today. Uh, again, I, I hope folks will consider uh, further understanding what risk is involved in this. And if, if you think it's appropriate, uh, you can you know, reduce the, the risk in your, in your leverage position.